Happy New Year's Roadrunners fans and thank you for joining us as we begin another edition of the Roadrunner Review, the 30 minute magazine show that features Metro State sports and highlights from the past month. I'm Miles Potter, alongside me is Kevin Hall. There's so much to get to in this month's show, I don't even know how we're going to get to it all. And we're going to start with our men's basketball team as they open up conference play and we also have one of the top soccer players in the nation as junior forward Abby Rolf joins us in studio. I cannot wait to talk to an All-American. But before we do that, we're going to throw it over to Karen Vega to bring us up to date on all our Roadrunner news. Karen? Thanks, guys. Can't wait to see if the men's basketball team can keep up their extraordinary play as they enter our MAC action. Hello out there in TV land. I'm Karen Vega, and let's get you caught up on some Metro State news. First up, the 2014 Metro State Hall of Fame was announced this past month. Five individuals and one team will be inducted into the hall on Friday, February 14th. The class is led by women's soccer defender Nicole Sito, who played in 97 games with the red and blue and won our MAC Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year in 2008. Check out GoMetroState.com for more information on this year's class and how to get your tickets for this prestigious event. From news that looks to the past to news that's up ahead on the horizon, Metro State was selected as the host site for the 2016 NCAA Division II Spring Sports Festival. The event will crown national championships in men's and women's golf, men and women's tennis, softball and women's lacrosse right here in downtown Denver. A great honor for the university and by that time, the new Regency Athletic Complex will be finished and it will be on display for the Spring Sports Festival and for all you to see. That's all I have for you today. Back to you guys and let's see those men's basketball players in action. Thanks, Karen. And what a great honor for Metro to be selected for that event. Yeah, it's going to be good to put Metro State back on the national stage, had some exposure with their basketball team. Now let's get the other sports involved, get them out in the spotlight. Absolutely. And talking about that men's basketball team, we showed you last month their incredible run to the NIT to kick off tournament before suffering their first official loss to Western Washington on the road. Head coach Derek Clark and their game finally ventured back to the Mile High City to take on Crosstown rival Regis University. After playing eight games in three different time zones, the sixth ranked Roadrunners took on the Rangers just five miles away from campus. Senior Brandon Jefferson, I'll take that, and takes it all the way for the easy deuce. Roadrunners forced 18 first half turnovers. The Rangers stayed in the game with some hot shooting, hitting 60% of their shots. Metro carries a seven point lead into halftime. The Roadrunners pulled away in the second half. Jefferson drains it from three point land. He scores a game high 26 points. Junior Mitch McCarron knocks one down from the same spot. He added 16 of his own. Metro State rolls to the 71-55 win to start conference play on the right foot. Uh, yes, uh, we lost last week to Western Washington, so we was on a one-game uh, losing streak. So that's one thing Coach said before the game. We got to get back on the winning streak. So we'll take the first game, uh, one and on conference. So that's a good start. Sweet, sweet home. Finally, Metro State got to play their first home game of the season. They hosted UC Colorado Springs at the Arari Event Center. The national championship runner-up banner being unveiled before the start of the game, but you know this year's team wants to bring home a national championship banner to hang on those rafters. Jefferson coming up with a steal. He leads the break, finds McCarron for the reverse layup. Home team up early, 8-0. Jordan Carter muscles his way in the paint for two of his 10 first half points. He led all mountain lines with 11. Into the second frame, Jamal McClorkin feeds McCarron, who takes it to the rack. McCarron drops in 27 points while adding in nine rebounds. Then McCarron on the sweet bounce pass to Obi Che, who reverses the layup. This game was all Roadrunners, shooting 65% in the second half alone. Metro wallops the Mountain Lions by 36 points. Yeah, it feels great. It's good to be home. It was you know, some long road trips that we had, and we talked about having a good start to the season on our home floor. We don't want to lose any games here this year, so that's a goal. Victory would not come as easy as the following night as 3-0 CSU Pueblo came to town. A little redemption on the mind of Roadrunners. Guess that means flashback time. At the end of last season, the Thunderers came into this very same arena and, and defeated Metro State on a last second shot. It was the only home loss for the season for Coach Clark and their squad. Fast forward back to present. Jefferson left wide open from behind the arc. 
He drains it at Metro up early. Dylan Frisch cashes in the trifecta for the Thunderwolves. Backup guard almost single-handedly kept his squad in the game with five first-half threes. Julian Caldwell at the first-half buzzer. It falls in and the game's tied at 45 apiece. This was a back-and-forth barn burner as both teams countered with big shots after big shots. A late run by Metro would put them up by 10. K fighting his way through the bum ankle for a couple three-point plays. Pueblo rallies late and scores 13 points in less than three minutes to get the game within two. A late foul gave Pueblo a chance to tie the game with less than one second left on the clock. Nathan Tigner misses the first free throw. He would have to miss the second. He does, but there's a lane violation. There would be no late game heroics for the visiting Thunderwolves this time. Metro State wins a great game, 94-92. What it was is it, we had some surprises in a good way. Jordan Hunter comes in, makes three out of four from the three-point line. Um, we just made high-pressure play after high-pressure play. When they made big shots, we came back and countered. So, you know, that's what a veteran team does. It learns to win the games in different styles. Metro State is off to a blazing 5-0 start in the conference. They are tied for first, equaling their RMAC mark with Colorado School of Mines. And guess what? These two teams will square off quickly in the new year as the Roadrunners will host the Ordiggers on January 11th at 7 p.m. at the Rarity Event Center. I cannot wait for that game against Colorado Mines. It's going to be an exciting game. Should be good. And then last time Mines came in, they broke our backboard. <laughs> if you cannot make it out, you can check out AmericaOne.com to watch it online. Still to come on the show. The basketball season is well underway and we have some incredible plays from this past December that you absolutely have to see in our top play segment. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors, Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. Welcome back. We now look to our women's basketball team who's coming into the 2013-2014 season with a brand new squad, looking to make some progress after that 1-3 start. Head coach Chanya Javi is working overtime to teach his band of new players how to play Roadrunner basketball, and they took on Regis University on the road to start the month. The Roadrunners looking to avoid their first ever three-game losing streak in the Coach Javi regime, but they had a tough task taking on those Rangers at the Ranger Fieldhouse. Senior guard Cassie Lambrecht led the way for the Red and Blue in the first half. The Colorado Springs native scores 11 points, mostly coming via the layup as Regis had no answers for her quickness. Sophomore guard Elena Velasquez comes up with the steal and goes all the way up for the easy deuce. Metro heads into halftime with a 35-27 lead. Preseason all-conference forward Amy Nelson receives the pass from Fawn Brady and she finishes strong. Roadrunners extend their lead up to 14 in the second half. But here comes the Rangers. Taylor Purdy, the RMAC's third leading scorer, pops one in from the perimeter. She led all scores with 25 points. She also added in 19 rebounds. Then Erica Von Stein finds Brandy Collins in transition for two more. Moments later, Casey Hurt goes right around Nelson in the paint. The Rangers reel off a 25-2 run to rally from that 14-point deficit to take the game by a final of 61-54. Well, we got ahead by 14, I think, in that second half, and we just completely stopped doing what got us to that point. And then some shots don't, didn't fall for us. We had some turnovers. I feel like maybe their momentum, the momentum changed. We got to, had some pressure, and we just didn't do a very good hand, job handling that. It was back home for the Roadrunners the following weekend, taking on the RMAX preseason pick to win the conference in UC Colorado Springs. Let's get into the action. Kai DeGarmo wide open from long range. She misses, but Nelson's there to clean up the boards. The senior is averaging 12 points and 8 rebounds per contest. Velasquez open from the wing. She connects, and Metro State is up by 9 early. The RMAX leading scorer, Abby Kirkhoff, flies to the rim, gets fouled, and the bucket falls. She leads everyone with 19 points. It's a close game heading into the second half before Coach Javi's squad breaks loose. DeGarmo goes inside to Nelson. And who can stop Nelson in the paint? No one, of course. The Utah native piles in 13 points and pulls down nine boards. Lambert has Kirkhoff defending, and that's a mismatch. The guard easily goes up for the reverse layup. 
Then it's more points in the paint as Ty Jensen beats two defenders for the layup. Metro goes on a 21-4 run to defeat the Armac favorites by double digits. The players were relieved to end that three-game losing streak. Uh, I think every day we go out and we have to send a message, but it's always nice to beat that top-ranked team and just show everybody that we can't be underestimated. Yeah, we've had a couple hard weeks and a couple hard games, but we came out and we learned from them, and people should be aware of that. Could the Roadrunners make it two straight wins? It wouldn't be easy as CSU Pueblo came to downtown Denver, sporting an impressive 3-0 mark in the conference. Lambrecht fires from deep. It doesn't fall, but Jensen is there to collect the offensive rebound, and she records the putback. Jensen came up big in this one. Jensen was ridiculous. She scored 12 points on 6-7 of seven shooting, and that was just in the first 20 minutes. Pueblo's Janae Locke led the way for the Thunderwolves in the first frame, scoring 9 points. Second half now, Jensen with a nice post move around the defense. She had a career night, scoring 24 points, but she was the only productive roadrunner in this game. Metro held Pueblo to just 57 points, but could only muster up 50 in the seven-point loss. It was a short homestand for the runners as they ventured to Black Hill State the following weekend. Coach Javi's squad held a nine-point lead with six minutes left in the game. But the Yellow Jackets went on a 19-7 run to finish the game, sending Metro to the 71-68 loss. The following night, it was the Roadrunners who rallied, erasing a 14-point deficit to steal the 7-point win. The Red and Blue outscored the Eagles 36-15 in the final 12 minutes. Yeah, a rough start for the season, but you know Coach Javi will have that team turned around here in no time. Yeah, some new players, so there would be some chemistry issues early on, but they're starting to pick it up. Absolutely. And still to come on the Rotor Review, we have some ridiculous basketball plays that will ring in the new year in grand style. And Abby Rolf joins us on set, and yeah, she's only 5'1", but I wouldn't mess with her. Come on back and meet the fiery forward as she gives us insight to the 2013 women's soccer season. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Some students come to Metropolitan State University of Denver to find their future. Others look to sharpen their current skills. In the case of David Thibodeau, it was both. Our faculty helped fuel his entrepreneurial spirit while encouraging him to pursue his personal passions. These two talents came together in Ska Brewing Company, which he co-founded in 1998 in Durango and is considered one of the top up-and-coming Colorado companies. The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors, Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries. Located at three convenient locations, catered at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. Thanks for coming back to this amazing show we like to call the Roadrunner Review. And we're happy to have one of the most amazing soccer forwards in the country. That's junior All-American Abby Rolf. Abby, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Sure. What is that like, being named All-American? I mean, uh, I've been telling everyone that I would give it all up if we would have gone farther. But, I mean, it's a great honor, um, honored to be, to be named All-American. And, um, but, like, but it has a lot to do with how great my team did this season. Now, going with your team, you guys had an amazing run going to Sweet 16, beating top, one of the top teams in the nation in Mines. What was the conversation like at the beginning of the season, how you wanted it to play out? Well, we set goals for ourselves, but um, at the beginning of the season this year, we wanted to set goals that were reachable early on in the season and then um, like reevaluate where we were in the season and how we could reset our goals. So we kept on little at first, but at the end of the day, like we, we wanted to go all the way. We wanted to go even farther than we made it. Um, so. I mean, there's more goals to be set next year as well. So last season you had five goals and 16 points. What were your goals for this year? 
Well, we set goals. I set goals with Adrian early on in the season, and I wanted to have over 10 assists and anywhere from five to 10 goals. So I think that I reached that. <laughs> but um, last season was a was a hard one for me with injuries, and so actually one of my main goals was just to stay healthy because that's when I can help my team the most. So when you were healthy, especially at the start of the season, you guys had an amazing run, were undefeated for a long time, had a great defensive like backfield and not allowing many goals. What was that like for you guys experiencing that start of the season, how well you guys did? Well, it was, it was a confidence booster, definitely, but you know, you can't, you have to go through some adversity at some point. So, you know, um, losses, ties, they only make you stronger. So I think that those, um, those hurdles definitely helped us at the end. Now you had 10 assists on the season and you play with some amazing teammates in Brandy Farley and Chris Price. What is it like playing with those guys? It's, it's awesome. I love playing with them. They're great forwards for me to work with as a center mid or when I, even when I'm playing forward with them. But they, I know where they are all the time. Um, they know where I'm passing it. Um, it's the chemistry that I've built with them in the past uh, three years has been, has been very helpful for our team. Yeah, especially with them coming back next year. It should be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited, <laughs> definitely. It's nice having Brand on the team that you can have someone to jump in their arms after yeah. the goal. <laughs> yeah, that's like our signature move. <laughs> We need to take a break here on the Rotor Review, and when we come back, Abby will tell us how they overcome a rough patch near the end of the season, and yet another incredible run in the NCAA tournament. And of course, how about that huge upset on number two, Colorado Mines? You definitely don't want to miss that. We'll be right back. Metro State Roadrunners, one of the most successful Division II programs in the nation. Six national championships. 65 conference championships in the RMAC. 248 All-Americans. The season is almost here and admission is free for all students. Great prizes will be handed out at select games, so make sure you're in the crowd. You can also follow the Roadrunners through Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and GoMetroState.com. Get in the game and get rowdy. We're back with all conference and all South Central Region forward Abby Rolf for a women's soccer team. Abby, you were also named All-American in the classroom. Is that really important to you guys on the soccer team? We set, our, we set goals for academic, um, academics as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's really important. And for myself, I'm extremely competitive with myself. I'm hard on myself. So grades included, I don't like to, I don't like to slack off in the classroom. So yeah, it's, it's important for us. Do you have like a favorite subject that you prefer, um, that you do best in? Well, not really. I, <laughs> um, You're just great at it all. <laughs> no, I, my major is sports industry operations, which I enjoy all those classes, I think, because I've always been into sports and the teachers are great, uh, usually in there with some athletes, so it makes the classes a, a lot of fun. And now switching back to the field, near the end of the season you guys struggled down the stretch a little bit, losing three of your last four mm -hmm. semifinals of the RMAC tournament. And all that had to do with injuries along the defensive line especially. Just take us through that last couple of games. Well, that's a hard stretch of the season. Um, you're, you've got a lot of schoolwork. Um, you, I mean, the, uh, the last, we had a tough end of the season um, just schedule wise. And, and so it was, we knew that uh, at, the end, like at the end of the season, what really mattered is that we were in the tournament and that that's what gets us the farthest. I mean, of course, winning the RMAC, winning the conference tournament, that's all great stuff, but at the end of the day, you wanna go the farthest in the NCAA. So uh, we just had to refocus and go after what we wanted. Your team was good enough to make it to the NCAA tournament for the 12th straight time, and you guys did beat Midwestern State. What is about this team that 
you guys like the NCAA tournament all of a sudden. I mean, <laughs> we talk about tradition a lot, and it's tradition to make it. I mean, we we have two national championships, and um, of course, we want another. So, uh, first step to that is to make the tournament. And uh, lucky enough, we did we did what we had to do in, in the season. But it's that's that's what we that's what we play for. Yeah. Now your next game, conference foe, Colorado Mines, number two in the nation. Hadn't lost all season, haven't given up two goals all season. You guys come in there, take the victory. What was it like beating them on their home field? Final buzzer going off every game. I can't explain the feeling. Like it still makes me smile. Um, but it was it was amazing. One of the best games I've ever played in, and I played in a national championship before. So, and that one was just amazing. Like I can't. Uh, we came out on fire. I think they just didn't really know what hit them. And they were on their heels, and we we played a full 90-minute game, which isn't easy, especially in the wind. It was really windy that day, and um, it was amazing. <laughs> so would you pick that as your favorite moment of the season? Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it was awesome. Now what can we, as Roadrunners fans, expect for 2014 from you guys? Um, Expect more. Um, we, uh, this wasn't, I mean, Sweet 16 is awesome, but we want to make it farther. So, um, like I said, set little goals for ourselves and um, hope to come back stronger and make it farther. Abby, thank you so much for joining us here on the Rotor Review and best of luck next season. Thanks, guys. Sure. And Rotor fans, we'll be right back with some top plays from the past month. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. Thanks for coming back as we head down the home stretch here in the Road Runner View. While the winter season is just underway, the fall season is one that saw many success as well as some incredible performances. This fall season was really one to remember from volleyball defeating highly ranked Colorado Mines at home to our men's soccer team upsetting Regis on their home field. So turn up the volume as we bring you the sights and sounds from this past fall season. <laughs> And that's all I got. <laughs> Finds it up high, and Metro State is beaten and caught out in a great save. Oh my, that was close. Now she's got nine goals on the season. What a day for Brandy Farley. Ball gets centered into the box header and into the net. Brandy Farley, and that'll be the hat trick. I'm Kevin Pocalco, senior midfielder, Metro State men's soccer. And you're listening to the. Oh, you're <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. How's the body holding up so far? Good. Um. <laughs> That's the worst answer ever. <laughs> now Van Lint over to Heath. And she has that one. She gets the kill. And Alyssa Heath ends this match with a monstrous kill. It feels so good. Like we knew coming out that this team was going to be really good. They're one of our main competitors. And we were just all fired up because it's our home game. Yeah, man, it was a great win. Uh, we had really had a bounce back. This was probably the most complete game that I've seen our guys uh, play so thus far. <laughs> I'm Nicole Pollock, senior midfielder for Metro State Women's Soccer, and you're watching Network. I could pee. You had to rate his robot one to ten. How was that? I'd give it a ten, man. He he is the robot. He created it. You can go over there too. You better watch out in practice. <laughs> Coming for you. Oh, this feels great. Um, they knocked us out last year in the Sweet 16 on our home field, and we got to knock them out this year on their home turf. And um, it's real good, real good feeling. So excited. <laughs> Done. What a fun fall season it was for the Roadrunners and of course for us here at the Roadrunner Review. Now it's time for your top plays from the month of December. 
and they are brought to you by the Regency. We start with some men's basketball action in play number five. Treshawn Wilford thinks he has the easy layup, but Harrison Goodrick says otherwise, smacking the shot off the backboard. How about a little slow-mo as the freshman from Sydney, Australia, helps his team defeat Pueblo to remain unbeaten in the conference play. Cassie Lambrack was running layup drills on Regis all night long in play number four. The senior guard was nothing but a blur to the Regis defense as she racked up 15 points. The Rangers had no answer for Lambrecht and she should be fun to watch as the season goes along for her team. Brandon Jefferson's defense on display at the Regis Fieldhouse in play number three. The preseason player of the year ripped seven steals away from Regis and turns a few of those into points. Jefferson swipes the ball away from McKelvey, then in transition finds Mitch McCarron who throws it up for the alley-oop. Oh, did we mention that Jefferson scores 26 points in the game? The dude is pretty good. Only makes sense to show play number two next, and it was Nicholas Kay's heroic performance against CSU Pueblo. The junior rolls his ankle in the second half, he hobbles off, and we're thinking he's done for the night. But Kay, he returns when his team needs him the most. First, Kay in the paint, fakes left, goes right, throws up the shot, it falls, and he would complete the three-point play. Moments later, Kay again, this time attacks the rack, he finishes and he's fouled. Australia is full of hundreds of animals that can kill you, and yes, that includes Nick K. He finished the game with 18 points despite the bad ankle and helped lead his team to the two-point win. Back to women's basketball, and it was all Ty Jensen's performance against the Thunderwolves in play number one. The senior was unstoppable in the paint for the Roadrunners. Here she rips down the board and goes right back up for the putback. She also collected 11 rebounds in the game. She didn't slow down in the second half. She also scored from outside the paint as well. Jensen records a season high 24 points and we hope it's just the beginning of what should be a stellar season for the senior. Those were your top plays for the month and they are always sponsored by the Regency. How about Abby Rolf joining us in studio? She's a great soccer player. Yeah, and a great person and it was fun to have her come in and talk about this season. Great junior season. She'll yeah. be even better in her senior mm -hmm. one. That's right. Best of luck to her. And once again, we would like to thank Abby Rolf for coming into the studio today. And once again, we would like to thank you guys for tuning into the show. And don't forget to check out GoMetroState.com for all your road owner needs. And check us out next month for more high-flying Metro State action. For Abby Rolf, Karen Vega, Miles Potter, and the entire Road Review crew, I'm Kevin Hall. Have a happy new year, and we'll see you next time.